Welcome back, everyone. It's John Wade Boggs fan. Well, in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Something that you probably don't see in the other videos that are posted out there as part of the card community. We all like, for those of us who do content, we enjoy showing off really nice cards that we're proud of, of having in our collection, whether we just got them in the mail, um, they've been part of our collection, maybe they're of Hall of Famers, um, you name it, they are cards to show off. Not that we're looking to show off, but we're, we're proud of, and we want others to see, and, and so on. I've Most of my videos are that way, whether it's a Wade Boggs card I get in the mail, or now uh, some of my vintage cards, um, even some of my other cards that I've shown off on my video are ones that I am proud to have in my collection. You're not going to be seeing those cards in this video. Again, I'm trying something a little new. Um, we'll see how it goes. But early on when I started collecting, and I've, I've mentioned this uh, scenario, I, I guess, uh, in, in past videos, but the, the local card shop that I've gone to for, well, since I've been collecting 35 plus years. I've lost count now. Um, but when they started up, they used to go to a local flea market on the weekends. And I used to, to go typically on a Sunday. And that's where I picked up the Red Shane Deist 1948 Bowman rookie card that has some pencil writing in and you know, it's, it's not in great condition, but it's a Hall of Famer. And I was told the story of how my dad pointed him out and said, hey, you should get that card and so on. Well, the owner of the card shop used to have, and he used to, to pack them in probably like team bags of maybe, you know, depending on the year, 20, 30, 50 uh, vintage cards of a particular year. They weren't in great condition, and most of them were, were commons. Uh, there weren't any you know star players in there. There are some that you may recognize the name of, but most of them no. But it was probably his way of, of you know getting rid of some of those lesser conditioned cards out of his collection, and they weren't that expensive. And for someone again who was a teenager, a uh, young teenager at the time, or maybe even slightly younger. Um, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on cards, and, and I thought they were cool to have some cards from 1963 or 1967 and so on. Um, but they've pretty much been in a storage box. Uh, while I focus on my Wade Boggs and, and, and other cards, um, and I'm sure you have cards in your collection that you've you've gotten and maybe it's more modern than than vintage which is fine but the, the concept is the same that uh you know you may have some of these cards of lesser known players and you just don't care to to look through them or whatever they gather dust you figure out how how can i get rid of them or whatever but for me all my cards un unless there's ones that uh, i've been given away through care packages and so on that i've been on youtube i i've, I've kept all my cards so in today's video, I'm just going to show off some of my well-worn, well-loved, beaten up, and that's what they are. I, I, half of them probably won't even grade if I had them graded, which I'm not, but probably not even VG, probably not even a three or four. I bet you most of these, some of these are probably like ones and twos, maybe a th few threes or something. That's not the point. Um... The point is that not many of us look through those cards at, at players that we have no idea who they are. They never really made a big splash in the major leagues. Um, now, I can, like I said, there's there's some that I come across, and I I remember hearing of this player and so on. Because of course, back in the six, this is before my time, so never followed them on the radio or TV things like that. So yeah, I'm going to turn the camera around. I, I think I have some, I think we'll take a look at some 1963s, some 64s, maybe some 67s, 
not, not too many, but just go through and, um, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot out there of collectors that, that want to, to start putting together complete sets, which I think is great. I think it's a little bit of a lost art, especially in today's, you know, just the way most people collect today. Um, it's nice to see that there are some that are going after trying to complete sets. And they also want to put those sets in binders so they can look through the cards. So it's not just, oh, well, here's, here's this Hall of Famer, here's that Hall of Famer, and so on, and just discard the rest. They want to look through all the cards in the set, all the players, all the, the wacky expressions. You know, there are some collectors out there that look for oddballish looking cards, and that's what they collect which is which is great so i'm sure i'll go i'm going to come across some of those where you go wow that that's an interesting picture but at any rate uh i've rambled on long enough here so i'm going to turn the camera around and let's look at some well-loved vintage cards in my collection all right uh, well let's uh get into some 1963 tops cards um you can see these are going to be really beaten up. Here's a West Stock from the Orioles. Bill Bruton of the Tigers. Alex Gramis of the Cubs. Um, Chico Cruz, 63 rookie stars. Um, this has like, looks like they have like two little pinholes in them. Um, here's Tribe Thumpers, Tito Francona. Again, nothing to home to write home about with these, um, but they're just interesting to look at. Here's a Don Lee. Looks a little confused, but interested. Love the vintage hat. Here's a Dick Raditz, the Red Sox, George Altman. Don Zanni, Zolio Versales. Yeah, never heard of you know some of these players you know for the Twins there. Ted Brownsfield, classic '60s haircut there. Leon Wagner. I mean, look how these are all you know so off cut. I mean this, <laughs> but Joel Horlan. Paul Foytak, Hank Foyles, Bob Turley. I think I've heard of Bob Turley. Um, like he was with the Yankees. Yeah, okay. So he was the Yankees. Um, this one's actually not too, too bad, relatively speaking. Still way off center, but Gino Samoli. I love some of these names. Joe Gaines. Norm Sherry, Chet Nichols. Oh, here's a Whitey Herzog. Again, I mean, it's this doesn't this card isn't worth that much, but uh, interesting there. All right, some more rookie stars. Um, Dave Moorhead. I, here's a rookie cup. Uh, Bob Rogers. Dick Farrell. I love the checklist cards. Let's see. Yep, here's one that's some kid started marking off. Well, they had a Brooks Robinson. They had a uh, Bob Turley, Ralph Terry, Willie Mays. They had the Willie Mays card in their collection at one point. So that's cool. Bob Allen, Don Leppert, Bill Bryan, Jim Grant. Mike Rourke, Joe Christopher, Glenn Hobby, Ken Hunt. Here's a Red Sox team card. What'd they finish? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if it says, but uh, yeah, team card there. Joe Amalfitano, Roger Craig. Here to become a manager. 
Sammy Esposito. Steve Hamilton. Almost looks a little like Bob Euchre. But Jim Fergosi. Another future manager at that, you know. Juan Pizarro. Diego Segui. Ron Nitsch Nitschwich of the Indians. All right, Johnny Padres. Washington Senators. I mean, yeah, again, these aren't that bad, but, you know, obviously ones that were just put in here. Look, looks like there's some water damage there. Looks like he has some freckles, but no, that's just a beat-up card. Bob Lillis. Jim Hickman. Another checklist. Front and back. Bob Schmidt. Ron Hansen. Al Spangler. Jim O'Toole. I think I've heard of him. George Olsick. Harvey Kuhn. Ed Lopat. Ken Hubbs. Pedro Ramos. And some pitching leaders. Ralph Terry. Jim Bunning. All right, those are some of the uh, 63s I have. Um, let's quickly go. Now, these 64s that I have, these were ones, and again, I think I told the story of a, a neighborhood kid when I was young, had these in his family. I forget what relative. Didn't collect cards, wanted to know if I was interested in them. I, 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 don't, I think I paid him something, I don't know, but ended up getting a really off, miscut. I mean, it's just not off center. It's miscut Mickey Mantle, uh, Yogi Berra, um, Herman Killebrew, some leaders cards, but they're not in great condition. And and so you'll you'll see here, uh, this is part of the group there. Um, Floyd Robinson, you can see a big crease right across his face there. Bud Daly, Don Clendendon, Dave McNally, Charlie Dees. Here's Ceiling Yanks Doom, 63 World Series, Frank Howard. L.A. Takes Third Straight, um, Don, Stra Don Drysdale uh, won that game, I guess. Russ Snyder, Pete Runnels, Earl Francis, you can see a nice, another big crease there. Man, this one's got a big <laughs> crease suit as well. Look at that. Uh, Bob Tillman, Beta Pinson. Bob Pretty and Tom Butters, the Pirates. Pete Boyer, Izu Salu, Ron Herbal, Sammy Ellis and Mel Queen. Bill Monboquet, I think that's how you pronounce it. Red Sox, Dick Nen, Nick Willite, strikeout leaders, Pasquale, Bunning, and Stigman in the American League. ERA leaders in the American League, Gary Peters, ERA leader. Um, hmm. 2.33 ERA. All right, so again, some 74s. Uh, we'll just do, I uh, just have a couple... 65s here. I don't know how I got these, but talk about, I mean, look at this beat up. Gene Stevens and Ed Rackow and Bobby Reagan. I mean, look at the condition of these. I mean, these were you know, not necessarily bicycle spoke cards, but man, they're beat up. I, I don't know how I got those, but they're the 65s. Um, all right, let's finish with some 67s quick. Um, these eh, these may, may not be too too bad condition. I may have over exaggerated a little bit, but not too much in terms of definitely in terms of centering. Here's a Ted Davidson. Here's some pen writing on this one. Tony Clo Cloninger. There's one that's all beat up. Dan Coombs. Got a uh, Pete Craig and Dick Bozeman. Pete Ward. Lou Johnson, Nelson Bryles of the Cards, Jeff Torborg, some 
rookie cards, but not the key rookie cards, of course. Dick Hughes, Jim Cosman, Jack Hyatt. And that even has a registry problem with it. But uh, Bill Kelso, Don Wallace, Larry Jaster, Bill Sorrell, Dick Dietz, Angels team card, Cesar Tovar, Frank Lindsay, Fred Whitfield, Lou Burdett. Hey, I got two Lou Burdettes. Um, yeah. Gus Gill rookie card, Bill Davis, Bill Willite. I think I just had him in the, saw him in the 64s, I think. All right, American League strikeout leaders, Jim Cott, Sam McDowell from the Indians led league. Julian Javier, Tom Kelly, Joe Nosek, Mike Epstein, Tom Phobus. Check out that unibrow. That's pretty cool. Jose Cardinal, Turk Farrell, Tito Fuentes, Joe Coleman, Jim Cullen, Larry Brown, John Miller, Ozzy Virgil, Jack Balshun. Here's some tribe thun thumpers, Rocky Colavito and Leon Wagner. Ken Boyer, got two Ken Johnsons. Um... Ron Fairley. Okay, Felix Milan. George Altman. Ollie Brown. Bubba Morton. Jim Barbieri of the Dodgers. Huh. George Scott, rookie cup, but a bit beat up. Hey, there's some of those Cubby fans. There's a Ron Santo. Way off centered, just corners all butchered. Tom Holler, Jose Tartable, Red Sox. Now look at this one. Check out all those <laughs> creases and Clay Darrymple, Ken McMullen, Joe Nuxall. He had a long career. Going back to 19, well, 44, then he was probably in the war, then 52. Yeah, long career, 135 and 117 was his pitching record. The youngest player to appear in a major league game. All right. At the age of 15. Ah, that's why Joe, no Joe Nuxall. Okay. But Bob Johnson, another Bob Johnson. Bob Severini. I have two Bob Severinis. Dave Bristol, manager card, Barry Moore, and Jack Hamilton. All right. So, again, it's nice to just every once in a while look through some of these cards. They're not, they're, they're probably worth, I don't know, for someone that wants to put a beater up set together or something, maybe they're worth 50 cents a card or something. I don't know. But that's not the point. Um, point is, I have some of these vintage cards. Uh, they're beat up, well loved. These obviously weren't intended to be investment grade and sent into PSA and all this stuff. Um, they're forgotten cards, and so I wanted to give these forgotten, well loved, beat up cards some YouTube love. YouTube love. So. All right. Well, hey, let me know in the comments if you found this even mildly interesting. Um, I may do some other ones of some other years, maybe even do some modern player, maybe some cards from the 90s, the junk era. For those of you uh, who you know grew up watching baseball in the 90s and never heard of some of these players before or in a long time, it'll bring back some memories. Who knows? But anyway, would love to get your thoughts in the comments. And let's get right into the trivia. 
All right, the question from my last video was uh, fairly tough. I had two, maybe three that got it. I believe three got it, but some very good guesses. The question was, which Hall of Famer struck out Babe Ruth more than any other pitcher? Again, there were some great guesses, but the correct answer is Lefty Grove. In 148 plate appearances against Babe Ruth, he struck him out 45 times. So Lefty definitely had Babe Ruth's number uh, throughout his career. All right, um, let's get to the new trivia question, and then we'll wrap this video up. With the recent um, trade by the Mets for Francisco Lindor uh, being a shortstop, um, the thought is that, hey, he's a good fielder. He may get a gold glove um, as a member of the Mets. But the question is, who was the last Mets shortstop to win a gold glove award? Um, it I, I sort of remember um, that this certain player, of course, I was, you know, I'm a Mets fan, so I know of this player. Uh, he was a very good defensive shortstop. Um, thought he was going to maybe make a little bit more of a career than he did. Um, but he was a sort of a typical maybe Aussie Smith. Really good defense, not too much offense. And it was in an age where, you know, you started getting some, you know, power hitting shortstops. And I just don't think he was, from the offensive side, turned out to be a great player. And I don't know even if they traded him um, or not. But anyway, I'm giving you lots of little hints there of who the last Mets shortstop was to win a Gold Glove Award. And of course, I will have the answer in my next video. All right, guys, uh, I've drugged this on long enough. That's all I have. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.